Hello and welcome to BIM 360 Basics. We're right in the middle of our collaboration for Civil 3D video series. Let's review what we've done so far. We've talked about what collaboration for Civil 3D is. We've talked about some of the things you might want to think about when you're considering using it. And we talked about our fictitious project team that we've set up for this simulation. I created the BIM 360 project in the web-based BIM 360 interface. And then I came in and configured Civil 3D to be able to look at that cloud project for data shortcuts. And then we simulated what Tom's role would be as a surveyor, creating the survey file for the project, and then Paula's role, creating the initial 2D layout. Tom created not only a DWG file, but he also created a surface that he supplied a data shortcut for so that the rest of the team could utilize that surface data. Paula did the same thing. She, she drew an alignment, which was able to be seen and visually used by the project team, but she also created a data shortcut of that alignment so that its data could be used for some of the Civil 3D functions. Next, we're going to play the role of Greg Rodriguez. He's the civil engineer in the project, and he's going to be responsible for road design. So Greg's going to create a brand new file And for him to get started on his design, he's going to need some information that's been provided by some of the other team members. So let's start with some XREFs. Just to get a visual reference of what he's working with, he's going to launch the XREF command and attach a couple of DWGs. Now instead of browsing to a server location, he's going to browse right to the project in the cloud. BIM 360, Epic Architects is the account. Here's the project. Here's the project files folder in the project, and here's the civil 3D folder. And these are the drawings that have been created so far by other members of the team. So let's go ahead and grab both of these, the layout and the survey. It's gonna take a few seconds for those files to be transferred. Okay, so now that the file's been downloaded, we can just click okay for the default XREF settings. And I'll close this down. We'll do a zoom extents. And there we can see our survey drawing, and we can also see the alignment that Paula created. So these are two drawings that were created by other team members that could maybe be in totally different offices in different states or different countries. It doesn't matter. They could even work for different companies. But they've provided information in the project that I can now access as the road engineer. Now, for me to do road design in Civil 3D, I need more than just the DWG information. I need the data as well. I need that alignment and that surface so that I can create an existing ground profile. No problem. I'm linked right into the project through my data shortcuts. I just have to make sure that I've got my working folder and my project folder set properly. Now, that's something we did in, I think, the second or third video. And that's something that every member of the project team will need to make sure that they do. They'll need to be trained to go in and set their, their working folder and their project folder. They should already know how to do that. They'll just be pointing to a different location when they line themselves up with the BIM 360 project. Okay, so I'm going to create a reference of my EG surface. So to do that, I'll right click on the EG surface and pick Create Reference, and then click OK. Now we're gonna see the visualization of the surface actually in the drawing, the data in the drawing overlaid on top of the XREF. And I'll also point out that EG is shown in the top part of Prospector here, indicating that it's part of my current drawing. And we even see the little icon next to it, indicating that it is a data reference. Just to show you what I'm talking about, I'm going to go into surface properties here, and we'll change the style of the surface so that you can see it visualized on top. I'll change it to contours and triangles. So you can see the triangles of the data referenced surface shown on top of the XREFT contours underneath. Let's actually change that to a no display surface. We really don't need to see it because we've got the, we've got the contours already beneath it from the XREF drawing, but we do need the data for the profile, which is there and, and just fine to use. All right, let's do the same thing with the alignment. I'll right click the alignment and select create reference. And I'll just go ahead and accept the defaults here. And that alignment's going to jump in right on top of the one that we're seeing in the XREF. 
The important thing now is I've got all the data I need to create a profile. So just like I would on any other Civil 3D project, I'm going to come up here to Profile, Create Surface Profile, select my surface and click Add, and then I'll click Draw in Profile View. I'll click Create Profile View, and we'll drop it in over here to the side. So let's think about what just happened. I had one team member create a survey drawing. They may be sitting next to me or in a completely different office in a different state. And not only did they create the drawing, they created a data shortcut of the surface. I had another team member create the layout for me, the alignment that you see on your drawing, and they created a data shortcut of that as well. So now there are three of us engaged in the project, four if you count the BIM manager who set up the project. And we're all in different locations. In fact, we could be all from different companies. It doesn't matter. Now, I was able to access all of that information in the cloud through XREFs and through data references to create what you see on the screen right now. This profile is the culmination of multiple cloud-based pieces of data that have come to together to create a brand new piece of information, that being this profile. So now as the design engineer, I would probably go into the profile dropdown and actually create a new profile for this road. So let's go ahead and do that. Just using all the defaults here and doing this really quick. So I'll draw a quick design profile here like our design engineer would probably do. Now it's time for me to save that drawing so that other people in the project can access it. I'll save it right into the project into the cloud and I'll call it road design. So that's it. That concludes Greg's role in the project of performing the road engineering. And of course I know that Greg would do much more than he's just done, but keep in mind this is a simulation. We're trying to show how the different roles interact. In the next video, we'll take a look at Mindy's involvement in the project as the project manager. She's going to see the work that her team has done and maybe have some comments that she wants to share with them so that they can make some changes. Thanks for visiting BIM 360 Basics. Please keep checking back to BIM360Basics.com for more tutorials, tips, and tricks all having to do with BIM 360.